I am your host of Across Generations, Tiffany D. Cross, and this is the only place where you will hear three different perspectives from three distinct generations of Black women, and I'm so thrilled to invite you to this conversation. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Across Generations. I'm your host, Tiffany Cross. And today we are talking about strippers. So growing up in Atlanta, strip clubs were part of a subculture that drove music, chart topping songs, artists, attire, and often leaving a scantily clad sartorial legacy, if I do say so myself. And over the years, the industry has become even more influential, not just when it comes to music and entertainment, but also when it comes to our politics. Surely you all remember Get Your Booty to the Pole. It was a different kind of vote voting public service announcement that highlighted conversations about who shows up in elections and who isn't being reached by the current outreach efforts. The video, directed by Angela Barnes, went viral online, despite being intended for just an Atlanta-based audience. Then there's the issue of labor organizing. Many strippers are overworked, underpaid, and subjected to unfair labor practices. And this has led to an uptick in exotic dancers trying to unionize. In 2019, actually, a Mississippi jury awarded a total of more than $3 million to five black strippers after a federal judge found the women worked under worse conditions than their white colleagues. And there's also the issue of aging when it comes to dancing. I mean, this is not a job that comes with a 401k. There is a limit for how long you can make a money living uh, booty clapping and sliding down poles, to be honest. And so what is it like when you age out of the profession? And however you feel about it, these women have a solid place in our culture and are rarely credited financially or culturally with the contributions to the current landscape and how it's been penetrated with their talents. So let's talk about some of these trendsetters and get into it. And I'm so excited to be joined by Shanika Robinson. She's popularly known as The Stallion. Now, she's a millennial exotic dancer, entrepreneur, content creator, and mother who is working towards her definition of success. On the other side, we have Sunshine. She's a 55-year-old business owner, and she's a former exotic dancer whose diverse experiences in the industry have played a significant role in shaping the person she is today. And I am thrilled. I dress for the occasion, ladies. <laughs> I wanted to wear something because I was just telling you guys before we started that dancers are always so beautiful, oh, like you. striking. <laughs> and I was like, I want to wear, and I'm like normally conservative and like buttoned up. And I'm like, I want to be out today. <laughs> so anyway, I, this is my cosplay trying to look it like you nice. beautiful ladies. Thank nice. you. Yes, no, we, we didn't even plan this. You got, we are right. all color coordinated <laughs> yes. uh, organically. So um, Shanika, I'll start with you. Okay. I kind of want to call you Shanika the Stallion. <laughs> yeah, I just love saying that Shanika the Stallion. Um, so you're still dancing yeah. now. Mm -hmm. And do you, can you say, where you're yeah, at? Yeah, we're at the Blue Flame. Okay, the Blue Flame yeah. in Atlanta. I have to tell you, my brother going to uh, be like, why you put my business out there? But my brother <laughs> used to love the Blue Flame. Like the Blue Flame, for you all who don't know, um, the Blue Flame is somewhat of an institution um, in Atlanta. I, a lot of you guys hear about Magic City, but the Blue Flame is like right up there. So is it, if somebody ain't heard of... Club. Right, exactly. <laughs> if somebody ain't never heard of the Blue Flame, I'm questioning their Atlanta street right. cred. <laughs> so, um, so you are at the Blue Flame and how you, I just said how old you are, but remind me. I'm 32. You're 32. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been stripping? Uh, 10 years. 10 years. So you got started at 22. Yeah. Okay. Young. All right. And how long do you think you'll do it? Well, I thought I would be done a couple <laughs> years ago. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, reality sets in. Um, I've come to like a realization I want to maybe another year, maybe, and then I'm going to accept my fate. But along the time, I have been, like, working on businesses and things like that. So okay. Just okay. wait for something to take off. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people are. Yeah. And so, Sunshine, how long did you dance? I danced from... Look, uh, well, everyone knows that I'm 55. I'll be 56 <laughs> next month. But uh, from 17 up until roughly about 22, I okay. danced. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. And did you dance... Where did you dance? So, I'm... Actually, from New York. Okay. So, yeah, I've never danced here in Atlanta. Okay. Um, I did visit Magic City. Beautiful women. Oh, my God. Yeah. But, yeah, um, I've always danced in New York. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you did visit Magic City. I did visit Magic City. So, when you were 17, was that the 80s? That was in the 80s, yes. So, you started dancing in the 80s. Mm -hmm. What is the biggest difference you've noticed in stripping since the 80s to now? Oh, my God. So... When I was stripping um, and in the strip clubs, it was more so, it was more like a burlesque. 
Mm-hmm. Like it, it was almost like you was enticing them. You know, you touching mm-hmm. yourself. It was slow grinding and, and yeah. everything. Nowadays, it's about booty popping, twerking, <laughs> jumping, doing flips. Doing. I was like, oh my god, you was doing a whole lot of that thing. Yeah. Like, of those things. So by the time. <clears throat> Uh, the pole when they yeah. started doing the pole, I was transitioning out when the when the, they was doing the. I did do the pole a little, but I was like, oh, this is a whole lot of acrobatic yeah. yes. things you have going to have on. A lot of strength. It, yeah. it, it, it definitely have to have I a lot of strength. I can't lift myself up to save my. <laughs> really? <laughs> I know one pole trick, and I can never do it again. <laughs> really? So you are not one of the. No, I am not a pole. I just do the booty clapping, as y'all uh-huh. say. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> you know what's funny about that? Because um, when I have gone to strip clubs, like mm-hmm. the way you're describing it is how I experience yeah. it. Mm-hmm. And I, so th- things that I do on the regular, I always go to the um, the Alvin Ailey opening gala. Mm-hmm. And so it's like all the Alvin Ailey dancers. I've been to Cirque de Soleil. When I see these beautiful black women dancing, I look and I'm like, this is like a naked Alvin Ailey mm-hmm. or this is like a naked Cirque de Soleil. Mm-hmm. It looks so beautiful, yeah. acrobatic. I mean, it's athletic mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. you're doing. It requires a lot of muscle. Right. And um, what I honestly, and this is no disrespect to anybody, but what I find distasteful about the entire thing is I wonder, like, do these men deserve all this? Because this is like an <laughs> art I'm looking. Yeah. And sometimes you, it's like, it's not always. Like, sometimes men are just there enjoying themselves. Yeah. But sometimes you see these grimy dudes throwing money and acting indignant. And I'm like, I feel like these women are putting on this beautiful show. Yeah. We would never go for this at, mm-hmm. like, Alvin Ailey or Cirque du Soleil. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking with, like, great admiration for their beauty. And I feel like, oh, I feel like they're being disrespected by these men. I don't feel like they're disrespecting yeah. themselves, but the men. Do you ever feel that way? Yeah, I mean, it's you have different types of men. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I feel like some men respect the game, some men don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, like you have to just take what it is. You know, I don't. I turn down dances, so like I don't just like if I don't like what you're doing, I'm not gonna dance for you. Like, really, that's just what it is. Yeah. And is that like so? I don't really know um, all the rules at the stripper club. So, or at the strip club rather. So when you. Um, if I'm a patron, I walk into the club mm-hmm. and obviously there are women dancing on stage, women on the pole. And if I'm at a table and I I can get you to do, give me a private dance. Well, at the flame, there is no private dances. We don't have like, no rooms. When I worked okay. at Club Blaze, they had private rooms. So okay. that's where you can go behind the curtain. I try to stay away from that too. <laughs> but yeah, the flame is just all open area. And our club, is we cannot, you cannot touch. No, no. So, yeah, it's different, different, different rules for different clubs. So okay. you just have to know the rules when you go into that club. Have you ever worked at a place where they can touch? Yeah, at Blaze. Okay, and how they was that? They were, like, grinding. Yeah, it was a mess. You didn't, didn't like, like it? No, I didn't like it. Mm-mm. And what happens behind the curtain? Anything. Really? It depends on who you're dancing. Some okay. girls just go in there and dance. I've been in there, but it was strictly just talking. Somebody mm-hmm. paid me for my time. Yeah. But I stayed away from it because I do know what can what it can lead to. So I are there people them. paying for sex? Yeah, yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. That's happening. Yeah. For sure. Was that happening when you were dancing? Oh, definitely. Yes. Oh, yeah, they, yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah. but when you were dancing, they couldn't touch. Oh no, they were touching. They so, were touching. So it all depends. So I I danced in three different um genres there pretty much there. So there was the peep show. Mm-hmm. Then there was um uh the burlesque dancing that you know I danced on the stage. And then you had the um the lab dancing clubs where it's like the griminess yeah, and you know and the touching and the poor and then the you know the more disrespectful than mm-hmm. anything. So in New York you had a bunch of different clubs that you was able to go to. But no, it was very much touching, yes. Mm. But when I first started in the club, there was no um where was a peep show. It wasn't really a um, a club, mm-hmm. so to speak. And it, they would drop the money and the window would go up. And then, you know, you would entice them and dance them. Dance yeah. with, and there was no touching with that. Okay. But then as time went on, then the glasses and the plastic windows went away. And then you're able to reach in yeah. and touch. Mm-hmm. And, the, and so, yeah, it's, it's, it, it was different. It's, did it's you different ever feel stuff. disrespected? Um, and the lab dancing clubs, I did... Um, I ventured out with some friends, you know, because they were like, well, come on, we're going to go uptown. You know, we're going to try this this other club. And I was like, okay, let me go up there. And so I went there, and by the time I changed in my clothes and went from the dressing room to the bar to get a drink, to get a drink I was pawed, squeezed. I'm like, what is this? If I'm downtown, <laughs> you paid to touch me. Yeah. Right now, I'd have been pawed and felt up and squeezed. <laughs> I said, I don't like this club yeah. because... They're disrespectful. And, you know, they'll, they'll know what itch, you know, what you, you doing here, blah, 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 blah. And it's just like, okay. 
Hmm. So they were they were disrespectful. Oh, they was very. I don't think people know how to differentiate. Like it's entertainment. We're there yeah. to entertain. entertain. Mm -hmm. I'm not there to find love. I'm yeah. not there to make for like. It's entertainment. Yeah, that's yeah. all it is. Mm -hmm. Do you feel disrespected? Um, I have, but I also realize like, hey, I am butt naked in front of people, but that mm -hmm. doesn't give them the right to you know disrespect me. But yeah, I it shut it down immediately though. So mm -hmm. I don't. Well, it was an incident where you felt disrespected. Um. I had I danced for a guy for probably an hour, feet hurting, mm -hmm. and he did not pay me. <gasps> right, so I was like, you know, you owe me money. You asked me to dance, and what, he felt like he didn't owe me that much. I'm not a shy, like I'm not a shysty person. Like what you owe me is what you owe me. Yeah, I got people in there they'll say they'll add an extra hundred, two hundred. I don't do that. Like what you owe me, and he didn't do. It. I said, look, we do this the easy way or the hard way. Because mm -hmm. if I go get security, they're gonna probably beat you up. Yeah, mm -hmm. he stood up, looked over me, like he put his head. Like I was like, oh, you're gonna like you're gonna buck at me. I said, don't worry about it. I went and got security and they beat him up and they took his money out of his pocket and I got paid. Oh, <laughs> but wow. when he was bugging it, was he like physically in Yeah, like he was in my face. Like, I'm like, oh, you're really gonna hit me. Oh like, my God. Yeah, I was like, don't worry about it. I ain't arguing no more. I went and got security and they handled it for me. Do you ever feel unsafe? Um, leaving the parking lot. Yeah. Sometimes. Um, like I said, I do a lot of content. A lot of people know me. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and then sometimes like I could be in the club and people just walk up to me. And not even in the club, I could be anywhere. I get a lot of random, hey, Stanley. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, how do you know me? And I'm like, duh, you do social media. Yeah. <laughs> so it, I do sometimes, but, you know, I have security most of the time walk me to my to my car. So okay. And I do carry a gun, so. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Most of the time they walk no, into your Yeah, car? yeah, for the most, yeah. They, okay. we have, they have security guards from the front door to the parking lot. They have them spread out. They're okay. Like, yeah. Well, when you say most times, so to, well, to yeah, me, sorry. They have security guards every night. After yes. Work. <laughs> and honestly, this is why I am a big advocate of yeah. labor organizing around this because you are literally putting your life at yeah, risk sometimes. Yeah, every night. Yeah. And mm -hmm. people mistake the fantasy that you're providing for reality. And yeah. they start to think, no, I have a relationship with Stallion. She danced for me, not like she danced with those other guys. Right. She was looking at me, They're giving crazy. me the eye contact. <laughs> yes. And <laughs> yes. so you're like, I it's a job. I've some crazy men. Mm -hmm. like, really? I'm like, yo, you don't even know me. Like, what's wrong with you? Tell me about one of the crazy men. Uh, dance for a guy. He was, like, infatuated me. I'm like, okay, I'm noticing it. I'm like, okay, cool. Then I'm, you know, I, I get my money. I go dance with him. He's following me around the club. So I'm, like, trying to walk away. And I'm like, I tell him, I'm like, hey, yo, keep this man away from me. Like, well, you know, then, you know, they leave. And they come back. And they're coming more often. And it's like... And then I had a guy tell me he loved me. And I'm like, I don't even know you. You don't even know my real name. Like, yeah. what, is, like what is it? Yeah. And I was honest. Like, I'm not a liar to these people. Like, hey, I have a man or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, at the time. Like, like I don't know. It's weird. But it's it's kind of, it's scary a little bit. Like, how could you be, like, that obsessed with someone that you don't know? Yeah. yeah. It's a fantasy. The fantasy so sound. what it is that they buy into the fantasy. And the yeah. thing about in the peep shows, we have what we call the fantasy booths. Mm -hmm. And so in the fantasy booth, what they would do is they would come in, and they'll be on one side of the glass, we'll be on the other side of the glass, you know, and either they'll tell us to take off all our clothes or they just want to sit there and talk, you know, yeah. and just talk to them on the phone. But what happens is they, you almost become like their, their fantasy girl and they look forward to coming to see you, sit down mm -hmm. and talk to you. Of course, you know, they take care of their business, they jerk off and do whatever, you know, on the other in side. In front of you? Uh, yeah, that was a part of okay. of them being in the in the fantasy booth. Yeah. But um, mm. it's a fantasy that us women sell to them and because they say some of them would tell me, well, I can't get this at home. So, you know, we come yeah. out here in order to get it, you know, because mm -hmm. you're beautiful and, you know, you listen to me. And, da -da. and so it's, it's a fantasy it that they buy into. And then they look at you as their girlfriend or their, you know, because then you have your regulars who always come to see you. And mm -hmm. if you're not there, they may see somebody else just to talk to. But for the most part, they have adopted you as yeah. their um, dancing girlfriend. Did you ever, like, have a situation where you felt unsafe where you had to, like, really draw a boundary? Like, hey, you can't contact me anymore, you can't come anymore, or something like that? Well, yeah, I did have a situation like that, and the uh, bouncers had to put the guy out because, you know, he he looked at me as his girl. I'm not your girl. I'm here, I'm working. Yeah. Look, as a matter of fact, you know I have a man. Yeah. <laughs> right, so, that's why. I, <laughs> like, did you, you have a woman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, no, that that's... that's that it's, it was very uncomfortable, especially back in the 80s. Um, a few of the girls got end up getting killed. I mean, some things was, was in really? the news. Yeah, it, it can be very dangerous because you never know. Like, when you leave the club, um, you don't know who's standing around watching, waiting, mm -hmm. and, and going to follow you at home. So I used to always be on the train. 
So I would get in the corner. I would always get in the in the corner seat mm -hmm. and have my back up against the wall and yeah. just be ready. I got my mace. I got my knife. I got look. I got whatever I think I'm gonna need. Because yeah. what you will not do is take me out. Yes, <laughs> yes. That I I am. I really want like it to yeah. be a, a nationally organized union. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you all have talked about men and relationships. Mm -hmm. Um, are you in a relationship? Yes, I am. Okay. And how does is it with a man? Mm -hmm. Isaac, how does he feel about you stripping? Well, I was York. dancing before I met him, so okay. he understood what I did. Um, did you meet him at the club? Uh, well, like, we knew, like, we kind of, in a way. Okay. <laughs> we see each other in passing. Okay. About that. <laughs> so, okay. But I don't think any man I've ever dated been cool with it. I think they, it comes with me. Mm -hmm. And I kind of stand firm on not, um, I stand firm on taking my stuff out the club. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so it's like, you kind of have to deal with it until I get my stuff together or, like, you know, you can show me the path or, you know, guide me into, you know, another world. So, but I'm very respectful with what I do, though. I know I have a man and that doesn't stop when I walk through the work, the work right. course, so. And you are a mother. Yeah. And um, you don't, I, I want to make sure we honor your privacy That's and safety you're a mother. Do you want to say if you have a son or a daughter? I have a seven-year-old girl, little girl. Okay. Does she know what you do for a living? No. Okay. Would, would, do you, will you ever tell her what you? Probably when she's older. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I don't want her to, you know, I don't want her to take that same route that I did. So as you far don't. as just dancing, everything else, yeah, but dancing, no. Yeah. Because it, it's it's mentally and physically draining. Yeah. How, how did you find yourself stripping? Ooh, I moved to Atlanta. Um, I was working at the mall. Paychecks were like two, three hundred dollars. My every my car was breaking down every other week. I yeah. couldn't afford my rent. It was just bad. Yeah. And um, my girl I worked with, she was, I'm like, she coming to work. I'm like, you're mighty fresh for somebody that works at this job. Like, mm -hmm. she kept herself up. And she's like, oh, I dance on the side. She took me to the Follies. And I was just, like you said, it was like, wow. I was mm -hmm. amazed. I was like, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So um, she put me on like that. And I just started dancing from then on out. Take me back oh. to that first time, though. Because, like, mm -hmm. I would imagine the first time you're walking on stage and you have to take off your clothes. You're obviously beautiful. Like me, I think, honestly, mm -hmm. I would be body conscious. You know, oh, yeah, I'd be like, can we everything. turn off the lights? <laughs> <You know? laughs> can we do, do you have a filter or something? Like, I would feel so like, eh, I don't even see me. Um, I would feel very nervous yeah. doing it. So take me back to that first time. Did you feel confident? Were you just out there? Or did, no, or did you feel... I was not confident at all. Because I was like, what in the world? I'm from Iowa, so we don't have stuff like this here. So oh, yeah. um, I pay, you, had to pay, you had to pay a bar fee, so I paid like $70 to work. And the whole night, I'm just wait, 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 standing wait, wait. out. You pay to work? Yeah, everyone has to pay to work. Yeah, even vendors, like hairstylists, makeup mm -hmm. artists. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they have hairstylists and makeup artists mm -hmm. at the club. Mm -hmm. And so as a dancer, you are paying into to the work bar. in their establishment. And then you get to keep everything you make? Yes, but you have to pay different clubs, different rules. But every club does make you pay, though. Um, you have to pay, like, the house mom for using her materials. Some clubs make you pay security, you know, um, sweepers, the people that pick up your money, things like that. So, okay. And the so, DJ, I forgot him, sorry. <laughs> the DJ, the bar, um, pretty much the owner of the establishment, yeah. the house mom... Who am I missing? Um, so me, I don't really have like a drinking tab because I don't drink too much at the mm -hmm. club. But um, I pay just the DJ and the house mom and the okay. sweepers. Okay. So that's but some I people pay. Will but pay it varies for different person. Mm -hmm. Those are like that you have to pay those. Yeah. So this is part of my challenge, right? Because a lot of you guys out there um, are like don't support labor and unions for um, strippers, dancers, exotic dancers. Um, sex workers even, and you're paying into the system. And my challenge with that is, um, if you weren't there, ain't nobody coming. Right, you know, exactly. if no dancers are at the Blue Flame, ain't nobody just showing up to the Blue Flame because... So why are you paying into the establishment? Like, they, like that has to go away. All these fees have to go away. The whole attraction are the dancers. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't seem like fair labor practices to me. And stripper, I, my understanding is that strippers pay taxes. Um, some do, some don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and as far as the paying, yeah, um, over time, that's why you see a lot of strippers, they're filing lawsuits now. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's a lot of things they can't do now. Like, now you can't critique how we look no more. That's mm. a new thing. Oh, if, wow. Yeah, so if they call me overweight or I'm fat, I can go find me a lawyer and I'm yeah. suing. Yeah, yeah. But that comes along with, if you do that, now you can't work in no other strip clubs because nobody's going to want you at their club because they know you're suing. So yeah. it was a couple losses I could have partaken in, but I didn't, so. Was it like that when you were dancing? Did you pay into... Oh yeah, so you 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 paid. So at the peep show, you paid. 
you know. Um, you, the artist, the dancer, oh, yeah. the main attraction is paying. You, you have to pay. They get a percentage of, of your coins. And your, and your, how, do you uh, remember how much it was back then? Um, I, I can't really call uh, recall. I know they took a percentage from the, the tokens that you uh, got. They also took a percentage of your tips because when how it was, when they tipped you, they, it would go in the box. So it was a glass box, and yeah. they had the key to the box. And so they would get a percentage of your tips, percentage of your coins, and um, when you went, if you went and you cashed a check, because with the peep shows, you did pay taxes. So mm-hmm. when you went to cash your check, okay, so we're going to charge you to cash your check also. But even at the other clubs, yeah, you you paid to, to, to dance there. And maybe it might have been $40, $50 or whatever it was, but yeah, you had to pay in order to be that's there. That's so ridiculous. I don't like that at all. I just yeah. think that's so unfair. <laughs> and yeah. if y'all are people watching this and you go to the strip club, be generous with these ladies. We, <laughs> we honestly, because you're, you know, yeah. spending your Recently, own money yeah. mm-hmm. and whoever goes regularly obviously enjoys themselves. So, you know, and you dance for that guy. Yeah. He was trying not to pay you and the safety, your own risk. I don't Imagine like any nice of it. that we don't make money. I had, oh, that's I've had true. I didn't think about that. I could yeah. pay $100 work and I might go to work from eight, get off at three, and I might have not made, well, not $1. And the so club you could lost be packed. Money. Yeah, yeah, you definitely lose money too, yeah. So how, if the club is packed and you didn't make any money, like what happened? You just got to try again the next day. <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, but is it because somebody was like, you know... I think now um, a lot of men just come and stand around. Back then, mm-hmm. like when I worked at Blaze and all that, like that's when times were good. Like they, mm-hmm. they know what they were there for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. These guys now, oh... Just sit at the bar drinking on their phone, texting. Like, they don't come there. Like, I would say now 80% of the club just stands around. Mm. Wow. And which wow. is like, go somewhere else. Go to a lounge, go to Dave and Buster's. Go yeah, somewhere. yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. exactly. We're here to make money, and I don't think people understand that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when you um, were dancing, Sunshine, when you were in the genre, and I want you to answer whatever you want, and then mm-hmm. don't answer whatever you feel uncomfortable with, but did it ever go further than a peep show? Did anyone ever offer to pay you for sex? Did you ever accept someone paying for oh, sex? Oh, yeah. I mean, so how I got into... So my son's father, who was actually a pimp, who I didn't wow. realize. Yeah. Okay. So he's the one that actually introduced me to the dance club because he took me out to work one day. And, um, well, he took me out. It wasn't one day. It was, he had told me that I need to work. But at 17, my brilliant brain. It was like, well, I don't want to work. And so mm-hmm. I lied, I lied, I lied. So I I take on the um, responsibility for me ended up on the streets and in the clubs because he wanted me to actually go work at Burger King. Mm. And I was like, oh, you know, I'm not, you know, in my mind, I'm too good to work at my Burger King. I'm yeah. And so I was going back and forth and I lied and lied and lied and lied and to the point he was just like, okay, I got something. And I was like, oh, really? He was like, we're going out on a date. I was like, oh, we're going out on a date. So I was all excited. Mm -hmm. But I didn't realize us going out on a date was him taking me down to 11th Avenue to the host room. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, wow. Oh, God, what what, what is this? Yeah. (laughs) And I was a sheltered child. I came from uh, an abuse household. Mm -hmm. Like, my dad abused me physically, sexually, um, mentally, like, all of that. Mm -hmm. I went through all of that with him. And so... um, in my book, I talk about I went from the frying pan into the fire. What's the name of your book? Oh, Pimp, oh, Pimp by the Devil. Life Pimp on the, by yeah, the Devil. Yeah, Pimp by the Devil, Life on the Streets. And the first um, um, book out of that, because it's a seven-book series, so mm-hmm. I, the first book is called Into the Fire. And it talks about when I ran away from home and all the decisions that I made, which was just devil-led decisions from one situation to the next was just bad situations. Um, and so the second installment, which will be called Broken Hearted, that's when it talks about how I got with him because he got me out of out of a group home. You know, again, I had no clue. You know, mm-hmm. a man walked through the door looking fine and looking like Prince, you know, mm-hmm. dressed in a fur coat down to, to his um, feet, had a fur hat on, looked like hazel eyes. I was like, oh, you know, he fine. <laughs> da, da, da. And they would look at me like, oh, God. I'm just like, but well, he he looks good. I'm putting on my coat. They're like, no, no, no. I was like, I'll see y'all later. Mm-hmm. And I left with him. And um, things was good for a couple of months, you know. And then it, it turned into a complete nightmare. And like I said, when he took me out to the street and I was um, that first night in some situation that happened with you, um, the, my first date was these two, uh, um, I guess, Indian guys, whoever, and was in a cab. And so they took me and they drove off with me. You know, he told me not to get in the car. Oh, wow. First of all, I didn't pay it. Yeah, 
anyway. You were 17. I was 17. You I was no idea. At, at, yeah. in the 80s. And so they drove off with me and then, you know, I serviced them because they wanted, you know, they wanted blowjobs. So I mm-hmm. serviced them. And then they was like, give me my money back. I'm just like, what oh, in the world? Wow. And, you know, and they was threatening me. So, of course, I'm scared. I throw the money. I jump out the car and I'm running down the street crying. Mm-hmm. And um, he's looking for me. And I don't realize it. Then he's calling my name from across the street and I run and I'm crying. And he said the three words. I love you. Just try it one more time. I was like, oh. Right. He say I love you. Mm. Oh, oh, okay, all right, all right, okay. He loves me, so let 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 me try it for him to make him happy, and um and I did, and everything. You know, the next two after that was successful. You know, mm-hmm. with no drama. But then he was like, well, let me take you someplace, and he took me to the strip club. I mean, to the peep show, and then that's where I worked there at the peep show um for for quite some time. I was at the peep show for quite some time. It was a safe haven. Mm-hmm. so to speak. Yeah, um, from the streets. From from the streets. And so I didn't mind being there. But then, you know, as time went on, it just, yeah, he wanted more. Yeah. yeah. And so I ended up back out on the street again, which mm-hmm. was a whole nother, whew, like that's a whole nother segment. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. The, the, the streets is a, was nothing nice. Yeah. You know, and I so. I can imagine. Um, I had family members who wanted to kind of dive into it. And my thing was, there's nothing out there. Like, I've been out there, so I would like to protect you from going out there because it's very dangerous. Mm-hmm. You know, um, being kidnapped, being beat up, being raped, you know, it's just so many things that will happen to you out there on the streets and even in the clubs, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And so it's, it's 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 just a different lifestyle. It's it's a real different lifestyle. And I'm just happy that I was delivered from that yeah. lifestyle. Yeah. Yes. I have to say, Sunshine, like, you are sunshine. Mm-hmm. You know, you. after going through surviving Mm -hmm. all of that um and i'm picturing 17 year old sunshine you know being out there the two Mm -hmm. people who were supposed to love and protect you didn't you found yourself out there um and just what you've endured and survived Mm -hmm. you know um and even like you you know moving here from iowa um and being destitute somewhere you know Mm -hmm. it's like you're getting a paycheck for two or three hundred dollars the common theme here is neither of you set out and said my goal in life is to strip. Right. You know, yeah. it's like this was this was an option. This was what you saw as a, a road to a better life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It wasn't your dream. It wasn't your goal. And it just feels um, the way it's done. It just feels predatory. Yeah. It's like yes. you both were taken advantage of. You're yeah. st- honestly, I think you're still being taken advantage of. If you're showing up to work, paying them, I feel like the blue flame, <laughs> the blue flame is taking advantage <laughs> of you. I mean, honestly, that's not okay. Okay, so I'm hearing these testimonies from you both. Mm-hmm. I want to ask you, Sunshine, um, mm-hmm. I'm going to ask you this too so you mm-hmm. can be thinking about it. Um, but how are you? Like, how are, is your spirit? How's your heart? Like, how's your humanity these days? Well, now I'm I'm doing great. Why? Because now I have a relationship with God. Mm-hmm. But before having that relationship with God, I was, I was a hot mess. Mm-hmm. You know, I was broken. Um, I wasn't confident. I was, you know, insecure. And I allowed a lot of people to take advantage of me. I was dealing with a lot of anger issues. Um, they had diagnosed me at one point being bipolar, schizophrenic, man- mm. manic depressant. I was on all these type of drug, um, a cocktail of drugs and stuff. And so um, I was drinking a lot in order to, you know, maintain um, smoking weed, you know, just trying to find different um, vices to make me feel better about myself. Cause mm-hmm. I, I really did not like myself yeah. and all the things that I went through and I, all the things I allowed myself to go through. And, you know, just, it was just, yeah. Do you, are you bipolar or schizophrenic? Oh no, I'm, I'm done with that. Okay. Oh yeah. But yeah. Did, did you feel like you were at one point? At one point? Yeah. I was definitely a manic depressant. I was angry. Like my anger was so um, detrimental mm-hmm. to me and others, especially road rage and driving in New York. Oh my goodness. Um, well, we I, all might be a little manic. Yeah, with that, that, one. That, yeah. that was crazy. I jumped out the car and you know the guy had cut me off and you know, I was going to the bridge. I had my dad in the car with me and I just walked up out of nowhere and punched the glass, the, the, the thing. And my father was like, you're not a man. Get back in the car. Get your dad. And I'm screaming and I'm going off on this guy. And he's looking at me like, what's wrong with you? Mm-hmm. But it's like, that was all the anger and the pain and, yeah. and the frustration that I had on the inside of me that I did not know how to release. Yeah. And so even when they had me going to the doctor, you know, and taking all these um, pills and stuff, I felt like it was the the pain and stuff was still there, but it was um, it was muted. Mm-hmm. And so I felt almost like a zombie kind of type of thing. Mm-hmm. And so, like I said, I didn't get delivered until 2010. 
Mm-hmm. But I was carrying around that crap from when I was five. Yeah, yeah of course. when I watched my dad actually kill my mom in front of me. Oh. And so, you know, I was carrying around, carrying around a lot from five to 40, 45. Yeah. Where's your dad now? Um, he transitioned. Okay. Yeah, he was, um, um, I had, I forgave him and brought him down here to Georgia and I took care of him up until he died. Did you ever confront him about the sexual and physical abuse? We touched on it, but I, it just wasn't, he, he didn't own up, he didn't want to own up to it, Mm -hmm. but I know I am like the twin, the spitting image of my mother. And so when he didn't see me. He seen my mom, you know, and mm. she was 23 when he killed her. Mm. Um, and he came back and killed her because some lies that people had told him that she was sleeping around. And so he came back in a fit of rage and, you know, he beat her to death. Wow. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. You are a, a warrior. And even mm-hmm. telling this story, um, Toni Morrison, an amazing, mm-hmm. beautiful writer, um, she tells a similar story in The Bluest Eye about a young girl who gets sexually assaulted by her father and Mm -hmm. but she tells it um from the abuser's point of view where he's looking at her Mm. as you know someone different so hearing you tell that story it gives me um chills but I just want to say what you've survived um few people could you know and I I didn't know her story so when Sunshine got here she just like dominated the room you know she came in and all this yellow and like (laughs) wonderful personality so it's just amazing what um, the human spirit can endure. You yes. know, we're mm-hmm. resilient. Um, so you say you're delivered from yes. that life. That life. Um, mm-hmm. But do you think, like, being on the other side of it, like, do you think there's something wrong with stripping? Like, how do you view the industry? Just stripping. We're not talking about sex work, but just stripping. Oh, strip. I mean, again, to me, it's an art. Because mm-hmm. women are beautiful. I yeah. mean, even I would go to the strip clubs and tip the women because they are beautiful. And because I've been in that... And that genre and in that lifestyle, I understand it. And sometimes you have to make the choice of, well, you know what? I don't necessarily have to strip, but I'm going to strip right now because this is a, a quicker way to, to, to a means to an end. Because mm-hmm. at the, the end of the day, I got all this fast money coming in. I can be able to, I can invest it. I can do other things with it. I can take care of my child. Like it gives you an opportunity to do other things. And so that's some of the things that I did when I was stripping. My son didn't have to want for nothing yeah. other than my time. And yeah. so, you know, we still kind of struggle with that, that he tries to get over that. I said, baby, you're 36. Come on now. Yeah. Like, Give your mother a break. But um, being able to be in that industry, again, it's an art, mm-hmm. you know? And like I said, nowadays, yeah, you know, y'all got the booty clapping and stuff and the sliding down the pole and just, and it's acrobatic and it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's just different. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's absolutely beautiful. And especially um, with our bodies. Yeah, mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, your body is not exactly how you want it to be. You know, yeah. you don't work out enough, da, 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 <laughs> so you may feel like you have to ever. do a little bit of work or whatever have you. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if that makes you confident in who you are and makes you feel like, you know what, in whatever enhancement that I get will allow me to, you know, really go out there and perform, then, you know, that's a beautiful thing. Because yeah. if you don't feel beautiful about yourself, then it's going to come across and you won't get no one to really want to tip you and, and, you know, and touch you or whatever have you because you that's a fact. Yeah. I just told um, a younger dancer that I was like, she, I was like, you take real good care of yourself. You look good. I'm like, but her aura is just so, I said, you are like, she's so pretty. I said, when you find yourself, yeah. mm-hmm. you're going to be a problem. I told her that. <laughs> That's a fact though. Like you're, yeah, you got to go in there with confidence. You're dancing with several other women tonight. Right. You want to stand out. You want that guy to say, if I see this, I want her. Like, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you, you and your son, are you guys, I know you said you struggle. Um, does he have any judgment for the life you live? Oh, no, or? he, okay. he understands. And I heard what you said earlier about uh, what you're doing and, and, you know, and what you're going. So my, what I did with my son, so at seven, you know, kids are cruel. Mm-hmm. So at seven, eight years old, I sat him down and I told him, listen, because, you know, your family's going to come at you. So before I let them come at you and hurt you, let me tell you. Mm-hmm. Your mother, your, your, your dad was a pimp. Your, your, your mother, look, I was on the street. I was on the club. Matter of fact, I'm still going back and forth to the club to make sure that you got stuff. So I strip, I get money, da 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 boom. Mm-hmm. He was looking at me like, okay, ma. So when they came at him, yeah. it didn't hurt him. It was mm-hmm. like, I, I already know. So, no. Yeah. Yeah. What you telling me that for? Because I already know what my mother do. Yeah. Right. And so I took away that weapon that they could use against him. And I probably shouldn't have did it the way I did it. But, yeah. you know, I was um, I was raised by my dad. I wasn't I didn't have that that motherly 
mm-hmm. um, nurturing that I should have had to be more gentle, you know, when explaining things. I, I, I was very harsh. And um, I could have done it better. But, yeah, mm-hmm. I just want to take away that weapon. If you could say something to 17-year-old Sunshine today, what would you say? Make better choices. Trust that first choice. And so when I ran away from home, I should have ran to the authorities. But because they didn't protect me before when I ran to them, Mm. I chose not to go back to them. But I should have went yeah. You know, go go to the authorities. They'll they'll protect you. You know, just because you're saying that, I just want to take this moment because that's such an important lesson. If you are young, if you know somebody um, who is young and in a bad situation, uh, I want to stress this point to you. Tell and tell and tell and tell until somebody believes you. Tell anyone who will listen, tell everyone who will listen that you are being abused, you're being harmed, you're being made to feel uncomfortable, you're being hurt. Tell until someone believes you. You are worthy. You do not have to stay in that situation. So please, anybody out there, do the right thing. If you know somebody, there is nothing good that comes from keeping something like that a secret. So thank you um, for saying that. Now, to you, um, what would you go back and say to that 22-year-old? And she's about to get on the stage. What what would you (laughs) say to her? Honestly, I would just say, um, I feel like I made... I think I, I feel like I've made great choices along mm-hmm. um, my journey. But I would say as far as like businesses, because mm-hmm. I started doing businesses later on in my dancing career, yeah. if you want to mm-hmm. call it. I would have just started sooner because I probably wouldn't have been trying to like panic on getting out of the club. Like right now I'm like in panic mode almost. Like, you are? Uh, yeah, I'm tired. Yeah, you are. And I'm emotional. Oh, That's okay. <laughs> It is okay. I'm such a crybaby. Yeah. Oh, that's it beautiful. Is okay. Yes. But no, yeah, I'm tired. Dying. So I would have yeah. just started sooner. Like yeah. just as far as business. But as far as dancing, like you said, I've traveled the world. Like I've been to so many places. I've done a lot. I do what I want when I want to do. So I don't regret like those things. The money mm-hmm. definitely put me like I had a great 20s. Like yeah. I, I don't regret nothing for my 20s really for real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So well, let me just tell you, I've cried on this show so many <laughs> times. So you are completely safe. I'm such a big baby. <laughs> no, you're not. I no, mean, but we have to that. feel our feelings, you know. And I yeah. I think whatever you've, you know, gone through, and it's okay to say, like, you know, I would tell this 20 year two year old to do something, whatever yeah. it is that's bringing up emotion, yeah. I think you have to feel that thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's nothing wrong with feeling that thing and I'm sure you've cried many times um and you know I've shared here on this show and off this show I've shed so many tears because it's about getting back in touch with that little person inside you that just wants to feel safe yeah. and secure and I know I look at you and I think of this 22 year old I'm like I, I mean the Lord please give me some money because I promise I do the right thing because <laughs> I would see you and think man this girl her whole life could change if I just yeah. gave her $50,000 22 like here's 50k right. start what you want to do you know so as as you're panicked is your panic fi- financial well it's just about like what is my purpose I mm-hmm, guess. Mm-hmm. So I started businesses. Obviously, they didn't take off the way I planned them to. So it's like now it's like, okay, look, you got to figure it out. I don't have a career, like a dream job that yeah. I, I don't have. You know, I don't have those. So it's like, I do want to be an entrepreneur. So that's where I'm trying to go. But it's, you know, I put my own money into the mm-hmm. businesses that I've started. So it's like, you know, your account starts to drain. Yes. So it can get a little scary. I Well, let me just tell you, because I don't want you to feel like you're out there on yeah. your own. I have been there. Like, yeah. I've done that. And I have, like, I, at one point, I like, I bankrupted myself right. trying to start a business. It didn't work. Um, but also, I left home when I was 16. You yeah. know, I, I never um, stripped or, or danced. But it's still scary being mm-hmm. out there on your yeah. own, yeah. trying to figure life out. Mm-hmm. And you carry the trauma of that for decades. And... The one good thing I will, will tell you, being 32, yeah. um, I'm 45, oh, yeah. and I I just, like, 45 comes so quick. You know, yeah. like, from 32 <laughs> does not seem like that long ago. I saw a T-shirt um, on Instagram the other day, and it said, it's so strange being the same age as old people. <laughs> I'm like, yes, that, <laughs> that is how I feel. Like, damn, I'm not 45. But I would just tell you... Um, I don't romanticize any other road that I I took in life. And 32 is so young. You can decide today at 32, you know what? I want to be this. 
Right. Whatever that thing is, I want to be an attorney. Yeah. Not that maybe that's not what you want to do, but I'm just giving. It, I want to be an attorney, and that is in your grasp. Right. Like mm-hmm. you can literally yeah. do that. It's hard and it's not glamorous, yeah. but you can at 32 decide that. I know people who had like five kids and went mm-hmm. to med school and yeah. became mm-hmm. a doctor at 50. Mm-hmm. So you can step into a new you as often as you feel like it. And I think if if you do feel panicked, I hope it fuels you to create the life that you want. Right, Whatever. Yeah. If you want to mm-hmm. dance for 10 more years, do that and be yeah. great at it. If you want to mm-hmm. stop, I, I just want you to feel like there's options and that you're open and you're worthy yeah. and deserving of whatever that dream is. So you've mm-hmm. come so far, yes. you know, mm-hmm. in your life. And yes. And what I would like to share <clears throat> um, is that when I stepped away from dancing, that's, I, I had that fear of, okay, so what you going to do? Yeah. So what I gravitated to to do is, well, I'm a great salesperson. If I could sell myself, I could sell anything. Yes. So I end up... <laughs> oh, <laughs> <wow>. <laughs> <laughs> so I went and I started selling cars. Oh, and so I did that for about a year or so. And then from there, I graduated and, and shifted over to being an assistant because I'm uh, I love assisting people, helping people. Yeah. And so... It, it is a scary thing when you're stepping away from the industry because you're used to this fast money, this everyday money. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I got money. If I need some money, I'm just, I can go to the club and, and I can make my money yeah. and I'm good and I can pay my bills. But then when you start thinking about stepping away from that thing, it's like, um, oh, okay, so what am I going to do? Mm-hmm. And so um, when I started working as the, as an assistant at the cable company, I did that for nine years and then I ended up transitioning down here to Georgia because I've been here for about 16 years. Mm-hmm. And then I um, I was, again, I was out of work again. I'm just like, what? Well, you know what? You just went to Magic City. Like, so here, the devil was in my head trying yeah. to make me go back. You know, yeah. oh, you know, you can see, you can see what it's about. You know, go over there and maybe apply. <laughs> and I'm just like, no, I don't want to do that. No more. I don't. Yeah. But I need money. Yeah. And so then I start, you know, um, asking God, all right, my passion, what is it that I can do that will be able to bring money in, but I can, it doesn't feel like work to me. That's mm-hmm. been in my so, prayers lately. So if mm-hmm. anything that you that. do um, that, that you feel great about and doesn't feel like work, I would say do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's such good advice. Mm-hmm. What do you love so much that you would do it for free? And and the journey, in, it's a journey of self-discovery. Like, mm-hmm. well, what do I love doing? You know? And I just, mm-hmm. I want you to have the freedom to do that. You know, whatever that looks like. So I, I just, I'm so great. I hope you all stay in touch because I feel yes. like your testimony is um, amazing. And you're so beautiful. Thank you know, you. I just think you could do whatever. If mm-hmm. you're like, you know, any, you could pick any career. I just think at 32, I mean, I consider myself young, you know, and I yes, look in the are, mirror, no, I'm like, amazing. I'm, yeah. I see, so I'm like, you're 28, you know, but it's like, no, chick, you 45. But, <laughs> but I, I just try to remind myself, like, this is the life I'm creating, you know? And I kept thinking there was something, at some point I was going to start living life. So let me start planning it. And it's like life caught up with me and it was like, oh no, 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 you were living life all that time. And in your twenties, all those plans, that was the time you were living life in your thirties. That was the time you were living life. So you are living the life you're living right now. And you have to decide what do I want the rest of this life to look like? Mm -hmm. And you get to decide, you deserve to decide that. So whatever that is for you, I just want it for you. And even Mm -hmm. if it's dancing, it doesn't seem like you want to keep dancing. (laughs) Yes. Mm -hmm. So, but I just don't want people who are dancing and who want to keep it. Like, it's nothing wrong. Do that. Like be the best at it. But it's like, you're ready to move on to something else. I'm definitely transitioning. I can feel it energetically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I I look forward to having you back because I I really do. I just, my spirit, I just feel your spirit and I want you to come back like, you know, I, this is what I decided to do with my life. Right. You know, oh. I want you to be supported um, in that capacity because you are deserving. That 22 year old who was struggling is deserving of living an easier life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Honestly, at this point, ladies, my thought is black women, we are yes. deserving of a life oh. of ease. We yes. carry so much yeah. trauma with mm-hmm. us. It's exhausting. Yeah. It is, it's heavy to carry around on our spirit. And I just, I don't know, I'm, I'm ready to put it down. You yeah. know, it's like, the okay, I can't. Cake, right. Cause, <laughs> cause we are, we're super women. Yes. I mean, and we I have to keep be. carrying it. Yeah. And I this cannot. is like, I'm ready to take the cape off. Oops, mm-hmm. Mike, I'm ready to take See, the cape off. See, that's why I don't like these mics. But anyway. <laughs> Excuse me, Mike. Um, but uh, to take the cape off and hang it up and be like, yeah. all right, l- l- like the Lord said, you don't take my yoke because my yoke is easy. Yeah. I'm ready to have an easy yoke and not have to go through the struggle. Yeah. Yeah. And I love what you're talking about, about your journey home to yourself and loving yourself. Yes. That is something. I'm going to yeah. tell you, I'm still on that journey. And I have to ask myself, um, 
you know, on the surface, like, Tiffany, do you love yourself? And mm-hmm. the answer is like, yeah, of course I love myself. Like, absolutely. Yeah. But then I have to go a step further. Mm-hmm. Am I spending my time like I love myself? Mm-hmm. Am I spending my time with other people like I love myself? Am mm-hmm. I working in a job where I'm valued like mm-hmm. I love myself? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Am I showing up in this <clears throat> world like I love myself? Or am I pretending to love myself? Mm. And that is the only you can answer those questions. But that is a journey you go down. And Mm -hmm. I just feel like answers are revealed to you then. You know, then it's like, no, you ain't been loving yourself for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, you stayed in a space where you weren't valued. Mm -hmm. And I honestly don't think Blue Flame values you because if they got you paying, I'm so mad about that. (laughs) If they have you paying, yes, (laughs) it's ridiculous. Okay. I feel like we're having um, a good combo, yes. but I do want to ask your opinion about some, it's not a lighter topic, but I think it's relevant to you, Sunshine, because you were talking about your journey um, and a part of your journey was Christianity mm-hmm. and, you know, you, you connecting with God. Yes. Um, and so um, Angela White, who was previously known as Black China, um, she was, a, I have to be honest, I don't know anything about her. I just know she was a reality star, but I really didn't know anything about her. Um, but a lot of people, like I knew the name Black China, but I didn't really know, yeah. you know, who yeah. she was. So she stripped when she, from the ages of 18 to 24 as a means to support herself and pay for education. And she um, became like super famous when she appeared in Tyga's um, Rack City video, which is a lot, a lot of um, strippers, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I used to work at um, BET. I was uh, an executive producer and we did this whole thing. You may be even too young to remember this, but um, this was like in maybe 2001, 2002. And the body tap, you remember the body tap? Okay, mm. the body tap <laughs> used to be this hot club in Atlanta and there was this like famous stripper at the time. Everybody knew her, Buffy the Body. Oh, okay, yeah. And we followed Buffy mm-hmm. the Body. And I'll share with you because I want you to know this. Um, when we sat down, um, cause I wanted somebody to show me how to do the pole, but I was wearing jeans. They're like, girl, you can't climb no pole in those jeans. <laughs> but I was, my whole point was I wanted to interview all these strippers who, you know, would do like rap music videos. And even then I'm like, so wait, y'all do these rap videos and they don't pay y'all? Like they, y'all just get the privilege of being in the video? I always got paid. So. Good. <laughs> Back then, some okay. of these girls were not right. getting paid. And I'm like, that is some BS and shame on these rappers for mm-hmm. doing that. But we had a series of girls come through and they would just come sit in the chair and I would always tell the camera, I keep the cameras rolling because, you know, I don't want to like make anybody nervous. Like, okay, now we're recording. But I would sit there and I would be interviewing them and just asking them, like, how did you, you know, get here? Mm -hmm. This one girl sits in front of me and um, I'm just asking her name and she says it. And then I say, well, you know, how did you start dancing? And everybody so far had been like kind of bubbly and up. And Mm -hmm. this girl just bawled. Mm -hmm. Like she just covered her face and started crying. So I didn't want to violate her. So I'm like, cut the cameras. You know, I don't. So I just took her hand as what's wrong. And she said, I don't want my grandmother to see this. It broke me. So then I start crying, you know, because I'm like, oh, my God, I was like, I can cry now thinking about it. But I just felt so bad for her. Like, I didn't want her to feel it's like we are so not like if you don't feel good about it, like we 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 won't show it. So we didn't include her in it. But I felt so bad for her. So Mm -hmm. I just want y'all to know when y'all are there throwing cash, like these are human beings with full lived experiences. Um, And so I hope that, you know, if you're going that you treat these ladies accordingly and that goes for women too like when you show up don't be looking at people with judgment and rolling mm-hmm. your eyes and turning your nose up like I don't like stuff like that either we're all women and <clears throat> yes. sisters and mm-hmm. so anyway I'll get off my soapbox back to Black <laughs> China um, she uh, was in the uh, Tigers Rack City video which um, led to opportunities with her modeling and so OnlyFans OnlyFans has changed the game for mm-hmm. a lot of yeah. um, uh, people in the adult entertainment industry and so she was one of their highest earners, ma- earners making $240 million a year. Mm. I mean, that wow. is like yeah. unheard of. Um, and she got some cosmetic procedures. She got her breast done, her butt done, her lips done, facial fillers. And she recently decided she needed to change her life. She gave up OnlyFans, became sober. Um, and then she started removing all her tattoos, implants, fillers. And she says she feels the best that she's felt her entire life. I'm just curious when you hear a story like that, what do you think? It's no judgment and, you know, to her, like whatever, yeah. whatever floats your boat. But what do you think when you hear a story like that? Um, I can, I kind of feel like I'm kind of going down that same journey. So yeah. like not, you know, I'm not going to remove anything, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
But yeah, I can I understand it. You get tired, you, get, mm-hmm. you know, it could be mentally draining. So yeah, I understand her journey. Like I'm going through that now. Like so. Did you have and you don't have to answer if you don't want, obviously, but did you have any plastic surgery? I had a BBL. Really? Mm-hmm. How was that? Um, it was in 2020. It made my money like I had made money before, but my money like skyrocketed after really? that. Really? Yeah. Well, that's, that's what I kind of did. I had a C-section too, so it was like I had a C-section. I was getting like big, you know, you get you gain weight yep. in mm-hmm. that little area. So that was like the first reason. The second reason, like, okay, I want to quit with an X amount of time. Let me make some more money, and I went and had the surgery. So okay, mm-hmm. and it did impact your money. Yeah, it did. Positive impact for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting. Mm-hmm. And, and did you, you ever have any? Yourself too. You felt better about yourself. Yeah, that looks better than clothes. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So oh, interesting. How yeah. do you feel about yourself now? Uh, yeah, same. Like, yeah, I feel like I've always loved myself. Maybe it might have been like a, a degree of love, mm-hmm. but. I'm learning to love myself more and more. You're falling deeper in Where, love. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm finding myself, like, yeah, so. Yeah. I, um, one thing I do, I've said this on the show before, but I, um, when I get out the shower and I ain't got no lashes on, no makeup, mm-hmm. you know, just looking like myself, hair ain't done, mm-hmm. um, I take a moment to look at myself yeah. and just say, how you feel about yourself today, Tiff? You like yourself? You like this body? You like this mm-hmm. little... Pooch, you get this little yeah, poop. I don't know, yeah. you know, yeah. right? I, when I came and had these clothes on, I was like, y'all feel like my boobs sagging. You know, they all sit up like they used to. And, but I try really to connect with myself just to make sure, like, yeah, I love myself. Yeah. You know, I like myself yeah. and I love myself. So that's just. You know, mm-hmm. a little something I do. I do the do. same, though. Like, I look at, you know, I, I got the shower, and it's like, yeah. oh, am I gaining weight? Let me lose mm-hmm. a couple yeah, pounds. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. But I do love myself. I love the way I am. I love everything about me. So. Yeah, that's good. I do. That, it's just a journey for me. Yeah. I know I got a, a long, I'm still on my journey. Mm-hmm. So it sounds you like you. amazing. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, <laughs> yes, thank you. Still yes. thank, you. That. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and, and likewise. Looking amazing naturally. So I, I don't have a problem with, you know, enhancements, because that's what, you know, people do. So Did you ever? Because I've always, I guess I've been a tomboy. So I've yeah. always like, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. So they're like, do you work out? You got muscles and stuff. I'm like, no, I don't work out. This is just, you know, it's natural. <laughs> but um, I, I actually had a, a cousin who transitioned because mm-hmm. she had gotten some work done. Um, she went overseas or whatever have you. And, you know, and there wasn't a, a good turnout, obviously. Mm-hmm. But um, I believe that uh, women in the industry have, like it's your duty, it's your responsibility to, because um, the our younger uh, young ladies are looking up to you, mm-hmm. and so this is you're you're not a a, a Barbie doll yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, if you want to make that decision to go and get work done, okay, at least let it be educational to to you know the the younger generation, so they don't think, oh, you know, what well, she's met, no, she had work done mm-hmm. and I mean it is what it is yeah. but at the end of the day educate them to let right. them know you know you don't need to go to somebody's strange hotel and get you know <laughs> fillers of yeah. cement in your butt and stuff and different things of that nature like education yeah. we have to make sure that we educate the, the, the younger girls they're chasing filtered versions on yeah. Instagram um, yeah, and it's like, 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 like lie that. about their surgeries too like yeah I, I don't find them I mean to each his own but me I'm always be honest about it like I said I'm not like I don't want the people I even tell my friend she doesn't dance she's a regular worker she went she wanted to get her body done and she no she wanted to get some butt shots and I was like please don't mm. yeah she's like I want I said just I said if anything go get a BBL like don't stay away from those like Mm-hmm. So I, I mean, I don't tell people to go do it. You can do what you want to do at the end of the day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But people that ask me, I'm like, don't do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're gonna gain weight. It's gonna right. Yeah. yeah. I'm spreading it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> A layering happens. I was like, well, I wasn't older. looking like this in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, can I just to be in transparency about yeah. being still on my journey? When you were saying like, oh yeah, I do that too. Like I look at myself. My immediate thought when you said that was, well, of course you like yourself when you look in the mirror. <laughs> yeah, that was my immediate thought. And I'm like, I have to remind myself, like, maybe somebody feels that way about me. Mm-hmm. But literally, when you said that, I'm like, okay, so you look, yeah, you like yourself. Like, by the way that I would like myself, You'd be surprised you know? by the women. Like, we have, the the, the dressing room is like the barber shop. Yeah. I tell my boyfriend, like, we have so many discussions. Really? But you'd be surprised by how many girls be like... I have a friend. She's so small, petite. I'm mm-hmm. talking about talk about a Barbie. Mm-hmm. Like she is literally perfect, mm. and I, I'm just so fat. I'm like, girl, stop it. You okay. can't even pinch your skin. <laughs> right, right, exactly. That's ridiculous. Oh, do, 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 do people t- tend to get along at the strip club? The dancers. Ooh. Aaron, we're we're all fake there. We have to be. Really? Yeah. You have to be yeah. fake. Uh huh. I just 
think it, I would imagine y'all would band together. No, like we, you would think so. It's competition. Really? That, it's a competition. It's a competition. Um, so you may have a group that, that gets along. Yeah, you have groups, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, I had groups. Yeah. I, 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 we, it, it was a crew of us, you know, and people would know that crew when they walk in, they're like, oh, God, there, there they go again. Just yeah. Like, whatever. But for the most part, yeah, because you're at competition with one another, mm -hmm. whether you're on the stage together or you coming up behind the person or, you you know, you'll, you'll be there before that they get on there. So, yeah, it's definitely a lot of, uh, 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 yeah, it's you know. Catty. It's, it's very, catty. very catty. money. Yep. People cross you about money. People cross you about it. I've had a girl check me or try to check me about dance for her customer. I'm like, well, hey, he told me to dance. I'm going to dance. Like, I'm here to make money. Yeah. My customer. We're not friends. So. Yeah. <laughs> that part oh, wow. Right there. Yeah. I, you know who wins with that? These men running these clubs. Yep. I got y'all paying oh, $70 like a dance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because I imagine what if all of the strippers band together and it was like, we demand these set of rules for us to dance uh -huh. here. I've tried that. Yeah, and I, it doesn't recently, work. Recently, um, because you said like the Barfy thing, and I'm like, the club is so slow now. Mm. Like, I have never seen the club so slow in my life. So Why? I'm like... Um, Why do you think? Things have changing. Um, times have mm. changed. A lot of men are dying. Like, the guys that normally come, like, the you know, the street guys, you know, scammers, mm -hmm. drug yeah. dealers, whatever. They're dying. They're going to jail. Inflation. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. A lot of things are just changing. Like, people don't have what they used to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. And you got to change with it, so. So you try to get something going on and... Huh, I'm sorry. Like, when you all band together and... I tried, to... but I said everybody's not going to stick together. Really? And I'm like, everybody, I'm like, just take one day out. Let's do it on an impactful day, like a Friday or a Saturday, unless they man it. You get, like, maybe 10 girls. Like, I'll do it, but 10 girls is not going to make an impact mm -hmm. if we got 50 dances a night. Oh, wow. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's true. So it's like... Now I'm gonna be fired. <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if we do, we everyone has to be right on one accord. On one and accord, I get yeah. it. It's feel like you out here trying to be Norma Ray, yeah. and then you know you ain't got nobody <laughs> behind <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, that's I. I just don't like it. I think it needs to be like a co-op. Like the yeah. stripper should have to own part yes. of it. You know, mm -hmm. something got to change. I don't like it. Okay, we gotta wrap. But I have one last question. It's okay. a silly question, but I'm just curious. What happens when you got to dance and you're on your period? Um, oh, tampons. Uh, yeah, well. Oh. But still, so, like you can see, I use so, soft cups. It's a, what's that? It's like it looks like a female condom, and then I take the tampon and I wrap the tampon up and I oh. put it in the soft cup and you show it up. And you can't nobody can see it. Nobody can see it. Oh, um, yeah. we, I, look, I be I scared sometimes. That. A lot of girls. Are, I'm some gonna girls say, well, you got a heavy but flow. But you never. <laughs> I do have a heavy flow, so yeah. but that's why I wear the soft cup because it yeah. catches the excess blood, and I wear okay. dark colors. So if I'm wearing like red or black. I'm on my period. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. But one of the things that we used back in the days, um, and I, I don't know if they still have them, but it's got the Today Sponge. Mm. That Today Sponge was like the magic. I remember the Today Sponge. The Today Sponge. The commercial it was, for it. It will suck up everything. So you could be up there flipping, flapping, bend over, spread <laughs> yes, your cheeks, you yes. know, and they, they won't know. They'll, they'll never You'll know. You'll never know unless wow. somebody tells you. Yeah. But wow. I had an incident yeah. where I kind of like bled on somebody. Really? My first time. Okay. That was like with my beginner day. Oh, oh my God. I, never, I left the club. I never looked back to that club ever again. <laughs> yes. And he had on a white shirt. I was like, oh, oh my, my God. Did he say bad. something? Did he? Oh, um, he tapped me. He's like, hey, uh, and I turn around. I look. It was like, it was small. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I got dressed. Did he pay? Yeah, he paid my money. I okay, think he, good. but I, I'll okay. give him this. He was very respectful. Like, he wasn't one of those guys like, oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, he didn't make it, like, to a scene. Mm -hmm. I think he understood. So mm -hmm. I'm glad that that was that case. But ever since then, I've been like, I'd be conscious. Like, yo, yeah. <laughs> make yeah. sure I'm on point before I go on the floor. <laughs> well, that was my silly question. But I was just That's curious. That's I'm like, silly, yeah. no, a lot of people, no. lot of people yeah. wonder that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you all go through so much. Your testimony is amazing. You. I love it. And your journey is amazing. So I thank you guys for yes. sharing your story with us. And if you watch this episode, mm -hmm. if you go to the strip club, I hope you, after hearing this, can be on your best behavior. Mm -hmm. Tip generously, because these <laughs> women are really, because y'all are paying to work, which yeah. is so ridiculous. If you own a strip club, you need to change your rules about how you treat these women and having them pay out to everybody. Um, if you are a stripper band together with your fellow strippers yes. and fight to organize and for labor rights i always support that i support um women charting a course for themselves um but i just really hope that we can see each other's humanity and you know mm -hmm. think about all the ways that the stripping industry has penetrated mainstream how we dress 
songs we listen to. If, a, if it's a bop at the strip club, it's a bop on <laughs> yeah. the charts, yeah. you know? Um, so to have some uh, consideration for that. And so I, I hope this has been informative to you all. And I hope that you will honor these women in the comments. Um, and if you go to Blue Flame, y'all better make it rain over there <laughs> as well. So she can start her business right. that she yeah. wants to start. Tell us that. Yes. <laughs> and then come back and tell us about her amazing business she started or whatever yes. next step. Mm -hmm. um, and please buy Sunshine's book yes. and support her and just support women. You know, yeah. we're at a new, it's the season of Black it's women. Yes, so, it is. Yes, it is uh -huh. our season and we uh -huh. deserve a life of yeah. Ease. Ease. Yeah. Ease. I got the trauma we carry. So I hope you all learned something. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Across Generations. We will see you next week with a brand new episode of Across Generations. We drop every Tuesday the audio and every Wednesday the video. So make sure that you subscribe, like, leave a comment, share all the things. And we'll see you back here next week. I'm your host, Tiffany Cross. <laughs>